it is with a sense of profound sadness and honestly despair that I have to report today that the war in West Asia or in the Middle East is expanding and that we are now at the brink of something very horrible. Uh, I woke up this morning at 7 a.m. in Japan uh, just for my best friend to call me and tell me that uh, Iran had struck uh, the Mossad headquarter in in Israel and although this is not confirmed yet we don't know whether this happened these are these are the things that are now going around especially on Twitter and it is clear that Iran managed to penetrate the Israel's Iron Dome and uh, significantly so the videos that are coming out um, on Twitter filmed by people who were who who, who ha just had their cell phones to film this are utterly clear about this um, just look at this one here, um, the, the sheer number of impacts that you can see here uh, speak for themselves. This, uh, I suppose, was filmed from a uh, Palestinian um, part in, uh, in uh, around Israel, um, as, um, he doesn't speak in Arabic, and the, 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 the scale of this is just immense. Um, Iran has said themselves that they used hypersonic missiles, some of their, I think they're called Fatah, uh, um, rockets in order to, in order to hit uh, Israel, the international media, um, the Guardian speaks about around 180 missiles that were fired the there are other numbers that are going around going as high as four or five hundred missiles that were fired and the this is obviously now uh this is exactly what benjamin netanyahu wanted the, the reason now to drag the united states into a direct war with iran it is um it is absolutely, it's absolutely horrific. This, of course, comes one day after uh, Israel itself um, bomb, um, bombed again Beirut and actually started a ground offensive, an invasion of um, southern Lebanon and has um, troops in southern Lebanon now, uh, which is something that, thanks to uh, Arno Bertrand, I was made aware that this, even mainstream media in the US is reporting that this is something that got the thumbs up and the green light of the United States, as the as Politico is reporting to us that U.S. officials quietly backed Israel's military push against Hezbollah, and with military push, of course, uh, we mean the is meant the the um, bombing of um, of all kind of areas in Beirut, which already until now killed at least eight to nine hundred people in. Um, in Lebanon, it's it's part of the culmination of the last two weeks of warfare, which were um, kicked off with the pager attack by uh, Israel and the um, just this sense of impunity that Israel obviously is allowed to strike Lebanon and, and tar target in Lebanon um, at will. Uh, something that we are seeing now is that the global media actually, when it uh, when it comes to um, Israeli attacks on Lebanon, has lost all its vocabulary that it has learned over the past two and a half years of the war in Ukraine. There is a ominous lack of the word invasion that is used in newspaper titles and uh, a lot of newspaper articles are talking about uh, Israelis incursion into Lebanon or Israel sending troops into Lebanon and the, um, the, the ideological uh, narrative spinning is going on um, as we speak. And right now these um, attacks, the, the, the missiles fired at Israel are the long awaited response of Iran actually. And Iran has, has taken a tremendous amount of blows against itself and against its allies in the region without doing something like this. And it, we commentators um, here on YouTube and, and far and wide have been saying that what, Ira, what Israel is looking for is a convenient excuse now to start a war. It happened on October 1st, just a week before the, the uh, one year uh, uh, anniversary of the of the October seventh uh, uh, um, attack, which is, Israel has been using so far as an explanation and an excuse 
for its a, gr a ground offensive and war against Gaza, which the ICJ judges is, is uh, gives cause to believe that a genocide might be going on, and it has been a genocidal onslaught with uh, at least at least forty thousand, probably way more, um, civilian casualties that um, that we still wait to understand, like the scale of the of the horror. Lebanon and Hezbollah, in in the meantime, have been have been supporting uh, the Palestinians with their attacks on Israel. The north of Israel ha had to be um, evacuated. Um, people all over the area are now uh, fleeing inside of of Israel, inside of uh, of Lebanon, and this is just a horrendous. This is a this is a horrendous development of and an, 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 an continuous continuous escalation. Um, there is no doubt that. Iran now is showing that it can and does hit anything it pleases. Um, the, this is apparently a strike on the uh, on another um, air base in Israel. I have no idea what these military targets are, but the pictures speak a very clear language. Now, just as clear is um, here's another one. Um, just the scale of this. Um, of of the, of the missiles no, coming through no. is uh, quite no, incredible. No. Um, West, the, the media, uh, what I uh, read so far in the New York Times especially and uh, in The Guardian, has been re reporting uh, the official the, the official answer from the United States is that almost almost all um, uh, missiles were successfully intercepted and that everything is working fine. This is an unprecedented escalation, they're saying, but uh, uh, Israel is, uh, is safe and sound, which obviously is not the case. Um, but we are now getting um, we, we get the spin, the, the, the propaganda spin, obviously to now cast Israel as the uh, uh, this as an unprovoked attack on Israel. Um, Caitlin Johnstone points this out very well, the, the, the framing that is being used now in, in um, Western media and of course of the Speaker of the White House, right? Iran's attacks, um, they escalate, she says, on Israel's attacks expand the conflict. Um, uh, Le Le Lebanese attacks are terrorism, Israel's attacks are self-defense. Uh, Russia did an invasion, Israel did a limited ground operation. I mean, again, this is, I, I don't think I need to tell you because ob obviously um, you watch this because you, under you understand all of this, how the, how the media spin is now starting to work. Um, Iran, Iran is actually, um, I mean, li not only living up to this, to this attack, but Iran is saying that, is claiming self-defense. Uh, its foreign minister um, said this night that earlier this evening we exercised self-defense under Article 51 of the UN Charter, targeting solely military and security sites in charge of genocide in Gaza and Lebanon. So Iran is um, justifying its attack by saying that it is doing what the West is doing with um, in, in regard to Ukraine, that it is helping the Lebanese and the Palestinians to self-defend, collectively self-defend against Israel. And the, the, the way that the Isra Israel's um, escalations in the war with Hezbollah have uh, recently widened the war in the north is, an, is, is something that many of us have been saying uh, pushes Iran with its back against a wall. Either Iran gets involved and actually supports its allies, or the the entire structure will um, crumble and collapse. And uh, what we are also seeing is that um, that uh, about about uh, five hours ago, so that would have been at around uh, six a.m. Japan time, which would have been around uh, eleven uh, p.m. in uh, Europe, that. Uh, that, that the Iranian foreign minister is saying this is now over for us. Um, he, he is reported as having said on X, our action is concluded unless Israeli regime decides to invade further uh, retaliation, to invite further uh, retaliation. In that scenario, our response will be stronger and more powerful. Um, Israel enables now, Israel enable, enablers now have to uh, ha um, height, 
now have a heightened responsibility to rein in the warmongers in Tel Aviv instead of getting involved in their folly. It seems that Iran is, have, is doing a last ditch effort at signaling that if the other side leaves it at this, they will consider the affair done. And that this is a kind of the language that um, we would have expected after a, is, a Iranian retaliation for the killing of Ismail Haniyeh, the uh, Hamas leader, which took place uh, more now about two months ago in, um, in Tehran, which was an unprecedented um, escalation from Israel's side, actually striking into the heart of Iran, into Tehran. And now uh, it was expected that Iran would strike back. Iran uh, uh, announced that it would strike back at Israel and now it did strike back at Israel and it is possible that Iran is trying now to frame this as the answer to Haniyeh actually and well obviously also self defense a collective self defense with Lebanon uh, which is the in fact the playbook or the, the the language of western countries used with Ukraine so you can see how this goddamn spiral of escalation is turning and how one side or one part of the globe, even the West, using certain narratives to justify warfare and warmongering and proxy war, proxy wars will then automatically be used by others in order to do uh, similar things. And the, the Israelis are, of course, uh, fuming out of their mouths and are vowing retaliation. And um, the what we are what we are hearing from the United States is uh, unconditional support. Again, uh, the, the the rhetoric is is uh, horrible. Um, the, the if uh, this is Benjamin Netanyahu's great wish to finally have an excuse to drag in the United States into an all-out war with Iran, um, and I do think that this is highly likely now. I uh, we read tweets on on the pro-Israeli side that are saying um, maybe I can even show you this um, th that are quite insane um, of people claiming that now uh, the the United States I don't have it here but that the United States uh, finally needs to take away the handcuffs from Israel and needs to give Israel what it needs in order to uh, strike against Iran. I mean, they, there's people in the US who frame the entire situation as one of failed deterrence and that the US didn't provide enough bombs and weapons and, uh, and destructive capacity to Israel and not as the opposite, which is, of course, that Israel got a blank check from the United States to do whatever it pleases and um, reign with impunity and commit all kinds of war crimes and target any kind of civilian side in, uh, in, uh, in Lebanon, in, in Beirut. And the, the big fear, my tremendous big fear, is that they, after erasing Gaza, after targeting Lebanon and, and, and trying to, and killing anyone and anything in uh, in Beirut, um, whoever they deemed to be somewhere that they might want to strike, they will now try to do the same with uh, with Iran and Tehran, and that we are at the brink of a very great war. This will come at significant um, global costs, apart from the um, from the the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of people who might die in the region. This will disrupt shipping, this will disrupt uh, international trade, this will interrupt oil, this will uh, comes on top of a strike that's now happening in the United States of, um, of uh, uh, um, shipping uh, workers. Uh, this is a very bad development. It also it comes at a moment when the war in Ukraine is for all people to see lost. It comes at a moment when apparently there was a decision taken in the Pentagon to uh, not allow for long range missile strikes against Russia. And uh, when it is now obvious that Russia is, um, that the Russian uh, uh, um, operation, the Russian invasion of Ukraine will not be, uh, cannot be stopped anymore. And when it makes sense, 
to shift the attention of the world public to a new theater, to a new war, um, just as the war in Ukraine happened only months after the war, after the United States withdrew from Afghanistan and wound that theater down, it is, in my estimate, highly likely that this new war in the Middle East will now be the focus of attention for months to come uh, while uh, Ukraine is being faded out into whatever kind of um, next stage this will go in. Um, once the um, the defense, the Ukrainian defense of their eastern territories um, collapses, as it seems as seems to be the case right now, um, which is of course a an, a tremendous embarrassment what is what is happening there for NATO. Um, but it seems that now the next um, the next crisis will just crowd out. Will probably crowd out overnight, pretty much over the last night. Um, what is happening in Ukraine in terms of public attention and public perception. This will all play into the um, presidential elections in the, United, in the United States, which is in six weeks times. And the uh, both vice president candidates, they were debating last night. They've already been asked about this and both of the, them have been adamant about um, support for Israel, um, whatever it takes. So um, this, is, um, this is horrible news. I wish I had something happier to report, but uh, we are all now bracing for what the US-Israel decision will be on how to strike back and then the, the spiral of escalation is gonna turn and millions might perish. Let's pray that that's not the case, but it's a bleak scenario. Uh -huh.